you take it out, shoot it visual. You know what I'm saying? It's just like that, you feel me? Okay. So you going, you know what I'm saying? How, how long did your addi addiction last? What, it was like 13 years? 13 years, like yeah. So from what age, from like what, you was going? To, you started from 14 to? No, oh, yeah, I was right. in my 20s. Okay, you just on the hard drug too. Yeah, cause that, 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 that run with ecstasy ran for a while. Okay. It was a fun drug. I don't, I even now, hard to, drug. yeah, no, mm -hmm. right. even now to this day, I don't, I, I don't want people to take this out of use, out of context because I don't miss no drugs. I have no urges, but if I had to choose a drug that I miss, it would be ecstasy because it's not a drug you're going to take on the Tuesday, but if you're going out on the weekend or you know you're going to smash something, yeah, you're going down that thing and you're going to have a ball too. So it's fun and it's not, you know, it's not addictive in the sense of cocaine, you know, okay. but if you're addicted to ecstasy, you're addicted to the atmosphere of fun it creates. Okay. So, uh, what, what what was the moment when you realized I gotta stop? Like, what, did what, did you re did you realize it yourself, or did somebody bring it to you? Like, yeah, I I, it, I just stop. I was just tired. I was tired. I don't even know. Like, I was just gonna hang myself. Oh no, I was just tired, man. I was tired, but I ended up going to church to get that monkey off my back. I mean, God stepped in there. Because before then, I went to rehab, 12 steps, NA, AA, you know, all that kind of stuff. I did, tried everything. So, so, wait, wait, wait. so what what took you to get into them steps? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because you was, obviously, I'm doing what I'm doing. So yeah. who brought it to you? All right, we're going to try to. Nobody, because, okay. you know, everybody was like, oh, you can help like white people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which is a stigma we got to stop saying. But no, nah, it's just like when you get tired, like even though I was doing it, like coke wasn't a good, cocaine wasn't a good time. It wasn't like ecstasy. So when you um, sobering up and you getting all depressed and suicidal and stuff, that's all the time. I'm talking about me, I'm nobody, anybody else. That's all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those things that I want to do. By this time, I'm addicted, you know, I'm addicted. So would you just like call up a rehab yourself and just was like I found one. I and I asked for some people to help me find one. Okay. Oh, my aunt, she was a drug counselor for the military and just, you know, you know, put Google to work and found a real real good one, real nice one in the bar. In the bar floor. Okay. And so tell me about that process quick. You know, you hear the stories, it's extremely hard to quit, you know what I'm saying? You was doing you know what I'm saying? You had done a bunch of drugs up to that time. So mm -hmm. so how hard was it, you know what I'm saying, making that transition to sobriety? Um, well, see, a, a, addiction is just, um, addiction is a symptom. I say this, drug use is a, dick, is a symptom of mental health issues. So you were... If you got mental health issues, you're self-medicating through different drugs to, you know, calm that down. So it took me to get treated for mental health. I was like three years sober, but I was still doing like dumb shit. I wasn't doing drugs and alcohol, but I still go off on people just doing crazy stuff. Couldn't control my emotions. I was like, OK, I can't put it on the drugs. So something going on. I went and got, I seek some counseling. That's when I got under control. I started taking a little medication and, you know, then getting therapy, you know, going through the week and pointing, he pointing out different things and, you know, I'm open to try those things. And then I started practicing them in my life. And my shit, man, my shit got better like that. Home life with my girl, all that stuff. I mean, it, it well, not like that, but. If we got there, and we still get there. You always, you know, when you're trying to um, improve your mental health, you're going to take steps from forwards and backwards. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the final destination, is, it's, it's going to be there. As long as you can see it and you're taking those steps, you're going to see the change. And once people see the change, they're willing to work with you. You're willing to work for, for you, uh, work with yourself, you can see some change, you know. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then, like you said, you get into the church. So when did, when did, when did you start, like, realizing, like, you know what I'm saying, you wanted to get into the church more and you wanted to, you know what I'm saying, bring that into your life more? 
Well, you know, I grew up in the church and got away from it, but uh, that's how I got clean. You know, uh, I had this dude had fixed my mama. She, he fixed her uh, AC, and um, he had, I met him later, and he came while I was working at the company because some stuff I didn't even recognize him, that he was that dude. But long story short, he gave me his number. And I was about to hang myself because I stayed up all night on a Saturday night after watching college football and just had one beer. That turned to two. Eight ball, bottle, vodka, 16 more beers, all kind of stuff. But um, I called him. I said, bro, I need, I need to go to your church. Bro, I need you to come get me or I'm going to be hanging from a tree or something. And, I, you know, long story short, I get in there. I'm not a praiser. You know, I used to be a rapper. You know, you got to have right. your image up. Right. But so I don't be in church and doing all, you know. And so I just heard, I just really heard the voice of God say, if you want to be done with this forever, uh, you got to praise me like you never did before. And that's not saying much because I ain't never been really praised in public. And I got up uh, three straight praise and worship songs. I praised them like super hard. And um, I ain't touched nothing since that day. So, so, so. You did, you was drinking and doing drugs the night before? I was drunk in there when, like, coked up. I could barely breathe because the nose stopped up. You know, it gets so bad to where, like, you know, you work, you're going on your 16 hour, where you shoving that shit up your nose. It ain't even going up. It's too stopped up. Ain't nothing. You know, I was like that in okay. that church. Been up for two days. Cold turkey. Right? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, man, I believe that God took that away from me. And I know that because I tried everything man had to offer, sometimes twice, and then they won't. 